Back in January, I told you the Take-Two Interactive Software, TTWO, the maker of Grand Theft Auto V, the best-selling video game of 2013, simply wasn't getting any real respect from Wall Street, despite the company's remarkable success. Fast forward to today, and Take-Two has given you a magnificent 30% rally. Since we spoke last to CEO Strauss Selnick six months ago, that's a fantastic move. You know what? There's more upside here. See, a lot of people still think Take-Two is a one-trick pony. A company that's all about Grand Theft Auto and nothing but Grand Theft Auto. That couldn't be further from the truth. Take-Two has a bunch of major franchises that can spin off numerous sequels, Red Dead, Max Payne, Borderlands, Bioshock, Civilization, and some terrific sports games that you and I play, NBA 2K and MLB 2K. Others who've been around longer may remember how Take-Two Interactive nearly ran itself in the ground back in 2006. Reckless management, bad behavior led to a string of lawsuits. This is not that Take-Two. In 2007, the shareholders revolted, replaced most of the board members, and appointed media turnaround artist Strauss Zelnick as the new CEO. And Zelnick's worked miracles. These days, Take-Two is just one lawsuit. It's a spurious piece of litigation from Lindsay Lohan, who I think is simply trying to gin up publicity. Meanwhile, the company's become a cash machine. As of the end of March, $510 million in net cash on the balance sheet, almost 30% of Take-Two's market cap. And the money keeps flowing in as this company continues to blow away Wall Street's estimates. Plus, these guys can still generate amazing new titles. This fall, take is publishing a game called Evolve, which took home best in show at the E3 Gaming Expo last month. That's the mecca for video games. Take-Two also has the highest Metacritic score from 2010 through 2013, highly predictive of future success. So does the stock have more room to run? Let's check in with Strauss Zelnick. He's the chairman and CEO of Take-Two Interactive Software. Hear more about where his company is headed. Mr. Zelnick, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Strauss. Great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, everything you said came true. Uh, and the stock's been a remarkable winner. There's a slide you've got. You've always been totally transparent, and your presentations are great. A slide that in, in a recent conference, robust development in the pipeline, more than 10 unique titles planned, strong lineup for fiscal 2015, including unannounced new releases. Teasing or just saying you yeah, got 1,900 gaming developers and you're not even sure yourself how great it's going to be? No, it's, it's just because we don't have a, a marketing moment to announce, so we wouldn't tease. It's, it's what the lineup looks like now. We did, however, announce title for fiscal 2016 already, Battleborn, coming to us from Gearbox Software, the same people who bought us Borderlands. So we are beginning to give insight into the release schedule going forward. You're also starting to tease about what could be the next generation. You're using a word that I love. You're saying that Take-Two is ecumenical. What does that mean? You, it means that we want to meet the consumer wherever the consumer is. We don't, we don't vote on business models. We don't vote on platforms. We have to be where the consumer is. We have to be highly flexible. We're not a rule-based company, except delight the consumer. Okay, so is the uh, ecumenical include Oculus from Facebook, Morpheus from Sony? Absolutely. Really? If, that's, if they turn out to be great game development platforms, and it's too early to say that they will. People who've tried them are excited, and our people have tried Have you tried them? them? I have not myself. My people have. They're excited. But we haven't seen how it interacts with our software. We haven't seen how people feel about having a, you know, a vision-blocking headset on for a long period of time. Right. Um, I, I've been reported to be skeptical. I'm not at all skeptical. I'm excited if the consumer's excited. Okay. You're also talking about uh, a Form 1 that you've got coming out. Uh, which you say is also a breakthrough. Next month, well, this is a, this is a, a, a recent uh, presentation that you gave, but you're saying this fall is going to be very exciting. The fall is going to be huge. We've got a big, big month in, in October. Obviously, we've got, you know, for the fall in general, right. we haven't specified a date. GTA 5 coming to next-gen right. platforms, that's potentially huge. You mentioned Evolve, and I am really excited. When you and I spoke about it, you know, it's, it isn't my nature to pump titles no, because it no, is a hit-driven business. Right. But it is, what happened at E3 is wonderful. Big, long lines of people. We couldn't tear them away from the controllers and winning best of show from the E3 2014 critics. We have a new title from Civilization, Beyond Earth. Obviously, new titles from WWE and NBA. And we obviously have Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Okay, so you have enough in the pipe for me to think that you are being too conservative at this point with your cash. Now, you bought back a lot of stock at 17, but the fact that the stock has moved up, does that mean that you should be something else other than just buying back stock? Is it too high? You know, we, we definitely have the opportunity to return cash to shareholders. Right. We also, because we this luxury of, of, you know, having cash is relatively new, we've had to really right. be very, right. very conservative. Right. We now have the opportunity to finance our, our organic growth, which has been a pretty good story right. since 07 and potentially to, to pursue inorganic growth in a highly disciplined way. You know that I'm a big believer that you do deals that are accretive or you don't do them. Right. And by accretive, I don't mean 
pie in the sky accretive. I, I mean mathematically accretive in the near term. Well, because what I was thinking with all the caches, I mean, what happens if you, you're, you're a completely, sorry to use the cliche, outside the box thinker. I mean, maybe there's a theme park here. Maybe there's some big ride that we all want to go to. Maybe you hook up with a Universal or with a Disney because some of these things I want to ride in myself. Or is that just too far-fetched? I, it's actually an idea we have thought about. We're not going to build a theme park. No, you don't because, have to, but the other but guy I, could do it. But I definitely think you're right. The notion that, you know, if you think what theme park attractions are, there isn't an interactive entertainment attraction Nothing. in a theme park. And we do have, you know, this fantastic collection of intellectual property. We wholly control it. It's all wholly owned. It's totally unencumbered. So if, if someone were interested in that, that is something we could do in the future. But to be clear, and I need to be clear about right. it, we'd never use our own capital. It's not the business we know. Don't want you to. Just want you to be Harry Potter because, <laughs> boy, I've had to change my schedule because of Harry Potter. <laughs> I'd like to change my schedule because of Borderlands. Strauss Zelnick, thank you for delivering everything you promised and then some. Strauss Zelnick is the chairman and CEO of Take-Two Interactive. Guys, it is still a cheap stock, and with that release schedule, I think you'll find even at 25-26, it's cheap on next year's earnings. Stay with Kramer.